Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm a teacher turned homeschool mom of three, and today I am sharing our resources for the last unit study that we did for history, which was Ancient Greece. Um, so I'm going to show you, walk through all these resources and talk a little bit about my planning process, and I will go into more detail about my planning in a separate video. So let me move these out of the way and we will get started. So we are using History Quest as our spine for our history study this year. And History Quest, I really like um, for a secular history curriculum um, because we have the audio book version of this and the audio is really well done. Um, we've also explored Curiosity Chronicles, but this was a good fit for our family. Um, so there are a lot of units and it's like one unit a week for the most part, um, over 27 units. However, we are stretching this out in some areas and going quickly through other areas. So we started off doing one week at a time and then we kind of switched over to doing more unit studies. Um, we picked ancient Egypt and then we kind of listened through the other ones and we picked ancient Greece and we're going to listen to the other ones and then do ancient Rome, the Roman Empire, and then we'll do um, uh, China. Let me flip to one of the units on Greece here and I am filming this during quiet time so you will hear my friends downstairs playing Plato. Okay, so each unit is set up the same way. This is unit 15 on classical Greece. Each unit starts with a objective or like an essential kind of, not question, but like phrase for the week. Um, learn about ancient Greece's classical time when city state of Athens became, came up with a brand new way to govern. And so then it has your resources and your materials, your enrichment reading, your supplies. It has a schedule. I really like that they have these terms and concepts broken up into big ideas and then the details. This is great and a lot of curricula for homeschools don't necessarily have this. So this is something that I really appreciate. And then you have your daily lessons. They all include a craft. There is a demonstration thing and we don't follow this you know, day by day, but I do like having these questions, short answer questions, and the narration option, and we do the copy work. The copy work is differentiated. You have two different levels of copy work. We are working on this one. Um, the top one, it's in a larger font. It's a shorter you know, passage, and then they have a longer one. Um, well, this one's not longer, but some of them are. Then they have enrichment ideas, and depending on the unit, there are notes from the author that kind of goes over any important stuff that you should know. So we have been using History Quest alongside our Ancient Greece unit study. When I do a unit study, I like to use a spine. That's a book that is like the backbone of your unit study. And while I don't love Magic Treehouse series for several reasons, which I won't go into today, they are great reading level for your kids that are fun and like historical fiction. We really love the audiobooks and I love the research guides or fact trackers, trackers they're sometimes called, that accompany them. And so I like to use these as like the spine for our unit studies when it's a history or, you know, something that we, they have a book for. And so Ancient Greece in the Olympics um, is the companion for Hour of Olympics, which I can't find, otherwise I would show you. And this is a library copy, so it's a little bit stressed. The contents go through ancient Greece, religion, daily life in ancient Greece, the culture of ancient Greece, early Olympics, Olympic grounds, let the games begin, and the Olympics today. And one of the things that I love about these is it's great for kind of setting up the um, flow of a unit study. So if you could do, you know, a couple days on introduction, a couple days on religion, a couple days on daily life, etc. I like that they have pictures along with um, like hand-drawn images. They usually have a map in them, which is great. In this particular one, we really enjoyed the section on Greek gods. Um, we have some of the other uh, Greek 
gods and goddesses mythological you know storybooks and they were not all a great fit for our family um, my kids tend to be on the sensitive side side with stories um, so these were great because it kind of gave a brief overview of the main gods and wasn't too long or involved the daily life area has some nice diagrams with labeling I like the opportunity to teach text features uh, throughout these books. You can easily break down some of the chapters into like days. So like you could do for daily life, for example, you could do a day on clothing, you can do a day on homes, kind of pick and choose what's important for your family. Plato catastrophe downstairs. Arts. Greek words, Olympics, kind of get the idea. So I really enjoy these. Um, for Greece, they also have a book, Warriors, um, that goes along with Warriors in Winter. And there's a chapter on Spartans, which was great when we were learning about Sparta. And they had this great hoplite, um, like anatomy of a hoplite soldier. And my son used this, this to create his um, page in his notebook, history notebook. We also really were into triremes, and so it was nice that it had a section on triremes in here with some great pictures, some more information on Spartan boys and women, about Alexander the Great, and that's that. Um, another book that I love for a spine and helping plan and organize a unit study are these books by Nomad, Nomad Press, and they have a couple different levels um, from like early elementary, later elementary or middle school even, and then like middle to high school. So the Explore Your World are the like early to middle elementary. So like, I don't know, K3, K4, K5 even. And they have them for a whole bunch of different things. Um, their history ones include Aztecs, Mayan and Incas, Egyptians and Romans. Our library has a lot of these. They did not have the Greek one. Um, so that's why we bought this one. So these are great. Again, they could be used as a spine. They have a nice breakdown. You have, you know, your introduction, your homes, about homes, about food, about clothing, about school, Socrates and science, the Olympics, democracy and war, and God, goddesses and myths. They have a nice timeline with dates. So if you are using a timeline for part of your history curriculum, um, which we are, it's nice to have the dates right here. We are using uh, Megan at the School Nest, her history timeline notebooks. And so this is great to have that handy. And then they're very like student and like parent or teacher friendly. Great illustrations. You can kind of do, you know, a shared reading if you want to. Um, you could just use this as the adult yourself for planning. I love that they have these vocabulary words on the side. They have maps. They have little jokes. You know, just a lot of like really great information. They even have like study practice methods. And then they have a whole bunch of different projects. Now, some of the projects are going to be more appropriate for your family than others or for you know, the age of your kids or their interests. Um, so don't, if you get this book, don't feel like you need to do them all. I think we did a couple of them, but really I liked the background information in here. Just so much stuff. You could honestly plan like an entire year um, using Explore Your World. Okay, okay so this is one of the printouts um, from the Evan Moore Ancient Civilizations pocket, which I have the digital, the digital copy, so I don't have like the hard book to show you. Um, and honestly, we did not use these as much as I, I don't know, had wanted to or thought we would. It just, my kids aren't really into cutting and pasting a lot. That said, they do have some great information. So again, if you're looking for a quick, you know, overview of a particular unit that you're gonna do, these might be a great resource. I also like that the informational pages within it kind of have two different ones, right? Like they have a big fact sheet and then they have this more student friendly picture and um, reading. So if you have a student who is reading, they could read this as part of their you know, work during the unit or you could do a shared reading, um, that kind of thing. So just thought I would mention those. Um, 
even more pocket things involve a lot of cutting and pasting and gluing. My kids are not into that, so I think that's why that was a flop for us, but it might not be for your family. Okay, last, um, I wanted to mention a free resource out there. There's a couple. I'm sure y'all have heard about CKLA, um, the Core Knowledge and their free resources, I find their website very difficult to use and navigate. Um, another free option is Fish Tank. And so I went on, I always go on when we're doing a unit just to see if they have something um, and kind of get a glimpse of what it might be. And so this is their second grade English language arts unit on exploring ancient Greece. And lo and behold, they're using the same spine that I used. I was like, oh, that's awesome. That's cool. Um, so I love that they have discussion and writing prompts, key questions, vocabulary already pulled out from the material that I was going to use. And I think it's really important for curricula to include things like vocabulary and questions of different um, levels of thinking, because we want to be building our students, our children's, you know, background knowledge and working on their comprehension skills through these units. I think integrating um, our constant areas into language arts is really important. And so this is a great resource for that. So I just thought I would share it. Okay. Next, I have all these different stacks all over. Y'all should see my desk. Okay. Next up, some uh, Greece specific books that we used. Whenever I'm doing a unit study, there are several different books that I'm looking for from the library. One is a set of readers that my son can read. Because we are integrating our content areas into language arts, I want to pull that in. My two go-to reader books series are the National Geographic Kids Early Readers, which did not have a Greek one, um, and Usborne Readers. And so this is the Usborne Beginners Ancient Greeks has, you know, a lot of information in here, but not too much for a new reader or even, you know, a full on reader. Like this is a great way to get that content into your language arts. And so we, I didn't read this all at once. We planned out, I planned out our unit in Notion, which I will share a peek inside um, in a separate video. But, you know, one day was food and one day was you know, art. One day was you know, gods and goddesses. Well, some of those were multiple days. So we would read the page that went with the theme or the topic for the day. These books also have a glossary and some websites to visit and an index, which again are great for teaching those skills. Another book that was recommended, I don't know, on some website, I think, was uh, this series growing up in and this is the growing up in ancient greece our library did not have it so um this is from thrift books it was like three dollars i use book finder to search and find uh, secondhand books they pull across all the different um, book you know thrift books ebay abe books all the different ones and they list them in order of price and uh, the quality of the book so this was great to add in. Again, we didn't read this all at once. We did, you know, based on the topic we were doing, but I love the pictures and I love the, you know, short synopsis. And it was just kind of a good way to start our lesson for the day. They have one on ancient Rome as well, which I just ordered again, secondhand for like $3, I think. We read the story of the wooden horse, the Trojan um, horse story, and there are a lot of versions out there. I needed a version that was appropriate for my seven and a half year old, my five and a half year old, and my well, two and a half year old kind of listening. And my kids are, again, a bit on the sensitive side. And so some of them were just too much. Um, the Iliad and the Odyssey, even the children's versions were too much for us. There are some great ones out there and I will try to link in or drop in a picture of those. This one was great though. This is the Osborne Storybooks series, Developing Reader, The Wooden Horse. There is a whole series that comes um, with these. They have three different levels and they have QR codes on them and you can um, you know, put them on a tablet or a phone and they will read the story along as you read it. So we love this. This was a great story, um, version of the story. Great pictures, 
not too complicated. Got the storyline across. Then they also have in these, um, you know, some story sequencing. Who is who about the story? Who are they? What are they saying? True and false. Talking points. So again, love when books include that. Another one is The Librarian Who Measured the Earth. This is about Era. Oh gosh, I mess up his name every time. Eratosthenes, and he was a Greek scholar who um, wanted to see how big the earth was. And that was, you know, a new thing at the time. And so it's all about kind of his story and how he was able to successfully measure the circumference of the earth. So this was a great living book to pull in. All right, moving in the big stack here. This next set of books I think they're going to just be a little bit off camera here, is a set of resource books. And what I mean by resource or reference books is that we have these and we use them throughout the year. And while some of these are kind of repetitive, um, I'll kind of walk through why we have them and how we're using them. History Quest uses the Osborne Encyclopedia of World History as its spine. And our book is a hard copy and it's kind of like about to fall apart. I wish they had like different volumes of them. Um, maybe the soft cover ones are more sturdy, I'm not sure. So here is the section on Greeks. We love Usborne. I love that they have all the different text features. I love that they have all this labeling. They have the maps, they have the timeline. Just a great resource for history overall. So these are the pages on ancient Greece. You have the Greeks at war. You have life in ancient Greece. You have the city of Athens and the Parthenon and about the columns. And then you have Alexander the Great kind of. And then we have the you know, section on Alexander the Great and how Macedonia, you know, kind of took over the Greek civilization. This is a book I would highly recommend, although perhaps the soft cover, I'm not sure. Maybe they've updated that. Another one of our favorite reference books for history is DK's A Child Through Time. This is a book of children throughout history. So again, you could use this over the course of several years if you're doing, you know, a four year history cycle. Let's see if they have a table of contents in here. This goes through early civilizations, classical age, medieval, early modern, modern, you get the idea. So the section on for Greece was on Leonidas, a Spartan warrior in training. And again, I love the illustrations. I love the incorporation of a map and drawings as well as artifact pictures. They have the timeline. It's kind of like a great overall picture and especially for children, you know, it's like a window into the past, uh, being able to kind of see what life would be like for a child of that time period. Another um, part of that book, A Child Through Time, is they also have, in that series, I guess, they have a city through time and they have a street through time. And the street through time did not have anything for ancient Greece, but this one did. And so this is going through different areas throughout history. So this is the first page. They have the Greek colony. They have this picture and everything, and then they have different people that you might find in the city and a brief little ex explanation about them. And then you can kind of look for them within the picture. They also have this page for uh, a temple going through, you know, the different parts of it and who might be there and why they're there. This one we don't use as much as the other one, but I am glad that we have it. All right, these two books are a little bit redundant, I guess. Um, this I would say is better for older students in general. Definitely like check all these books out from a library before you decide to purchase them, if you're even considering that. But both of these books go through history year by year. So instead of focusing on just ancient Greece and all the things that happened across the time frame, these are going to look at that time frame and what's kind of happening all around it, which I think is important for kids to give them some perspective and start to think about things chronologically and, you know, not just isolated in one location because history is happening in the world all over at the same time. So this one is one of the DK Smithsonian books. I love all the DK Smithsonian books. And so we have some of the Greek 
writing in here and you'll notice the Olympics, but we also have about the Assyrians, the city of Jerusalem, Arctic hunters, you know, kind of getting that great big picture. And then we continue to move on. Um, we have the first use of coins. And then we have a whole double page spread on Sparta. So every now and then they'll have a double page spread. And so I like to kind of flip through it and see if the book is going to be a good resource to pull for that unit. And then we have the Great Persians War. We have the Parthenon. We have, you know, another one about the Peloponnesian War. But also, you know, calling out the Celtic warriors, you know, kind of in the same general area. Another one that is similar is the when on earth. They also have where on earth. So that's talking more about focusing exactly on the region over time versus this is time over the regions, if that makes sense. So ancient Greece, um, we have the ancient Americas, and then, you know, kind of right next to it, we have ancient Greece. And this is a little bit different from that other one. It has a double page spread for kind of each topic that it covers. So we have, you know, 1200 to 900. And over here we have 700 to 400. So kind of a big jump, but looking at like the big important, well, what they deem to be important events in history. So always keeping in mind that somebody is choosing what events to feature and think about who that is and why they are choosing it. Okay, these are some other fun books that we have. My kids love these. This is a um, book from the Magnified series, and they include a little magnifying glass that has been misplaced. Um, they have other ones like Ancient Egyptians and Pirates and Castles. This is the Ancient World, which happens to have pretty much all of the units we're doing for History Quest. And so, oh, hold on, I have it marked for our upcoming unit. Okay. Okay, I had this one in my stack because it had a flag and I thought it was for Greece, but it turns out that I had already marked it for Rome and there is not anything in here for Greece. However, here's a preview of the Colosseum. The next section I have are our hands-on projects. And yes, we did a Grecian urn. <laughs> um, okay, so a couple things, the urns. Okay, I lost the picture. I think they're art history kits. I will link them below. Um, just a little kit. These were two kits. Uh, we did these after talking about Greek art. We talked about the different types of pottery they had and why they had them and what they put in them. And one of the things that stuck with the kids is that they often drew paintings to indicate what was inside the pottery. And so my daughter decided that she was going to store seashells in hers. And so she drew them and then you know, some other things as well. And my son decided he was going to store his special Lego things on his dresser in this. So he painted Lego bricks. So those were fun. And they're not that expensive either. They were like $10, $15. I'll drop that in. This is another kit that we got. I think I saw these Pathfinder kits on um, from Hannah from Pepper and Pine. Pathfinders has a lot of different kits. It says 8+. plus. I definitely agree with this. Um... If your child is going to do this independently, I would say like 10, 11, 12 maybe. Um, this was a much bigger project than we anticipated. In fact, it's still sitting on the kitchen island downstairs because it needs uh, dad's help to be finished. It involves a lot of gluing and a lot of patience. And I'm sure it will be worth it in the end. But for now, it's a lot. Just you know, keep in mind the ages and when you're going to do these projects and who will be able to help with them. Here's some other examples that they have. And last but not least for the little hands-on type things, um, these little famous figurines of ancient times. I can't find ours. Um, we, I guess we didn't do Alexander the Great, so here he is. So you cut them out and you use those little brads and then they have like movable arms and all that jazz. Okay, I also have a couple of books specific to my son's interest in architecture that we use throughout the year and just, you know, in general to look at. This book, Architecture and Visual History, is great. It is all photographs of different, well, I guess that's on photograph, that's a diagram. 
you know, things in architecture. And so they have a section on the classical world, including, you know, the Parthenon. They have the Romans in here as well. Ancient Greece, they go through the different styles of columns. Just all about the architecture. Love this cutaway here for the Parthenon. And so this is nice to kind of give you a book version of, you know, real life, the remains that are that are there. We also include um, YouTube in our unit studies and take tours of all these, you know, historical sites on YouTube virtually. And I have all those playlists saved on my YouTube channel. So if you want to check out our Ancient Greece playlist, you are welcome to check that out. We also love these Stephen Beastie books. And where's Greece? So there's a whole little section on Greece here. We go through the different temples, the people's procession. Then we have the Parthenon. They have these little flap pages going over the classical orders. And we have this great diagram and cutaway of the Parthenon, which is awesome. We love the cutaways. My son used this and another book. Oh, I've misplaced that as well. I will drop that in. That had another cutaway when my son was building it out of blocks. Okay, last but not least, I thought I would show a little bit of our notebooking. So we, again, we integrate history and science into our language arts, and that comes across several different ways. Um, my son is seven and a half in first grade, and so we are using the School Nest first grade notebook for for our general catch-all. And then I have these Strathmore visual um, drawing series, I think, visual series, I'll link them, um, for our weekly reflection. So we did not end up doing a lot of work in this notebook. Um, we did this together. This is my handwriting. Um, we watched a video about the impact of geography on the ancient Greek civilization. We did this little web. So the, the point of this lesson was about organizing our thoughts and using um, graphic organizers like webs, and then using that to you know put down our thoughts and then pull those thoughts back together into sentences. And so he was telling me what to write for this. And then he told me his sentences to write. Um, Okay, and here's just one of those little cutouts we did from the Evan Moore thing. And he went through and he read it and he highlighted um, his key facts using the ideas from the keyword outline from IEW. So that is that. Most of his writing for this ancient Greece unit ended up in his book here. We do, we do one page a week for history and one page a week for science. And so the first one for every unit we do is on is a map and we kind of add to the map throughout the unit. So this map started off with a light box and my son tracing the map that History Quest provides. And then he just colored in the green for Greece and the water. And then another week we colored in the Sparta and the Athenians, etc. Over here we have some coffee work, and then we have um, a dictation, not a dictation, a narration, a little blip that he told me to write. And then we have a page that we did after reading the Trojan horse story. He drew the Trojan horse and he gave a narration of the story and I wrote it down as he talked and then he wrote the title. Then our section on Sparta, he drew a Greek coplite soldier and warrior, I guess, labeled the anatomy. Uh, this was some copy work, looking at the different diagrams and reading that and copying it. And then over here, we have a dictation sentence. So I told him the words to write. We did our dictation routine and he wrote these down using the sounds that he knew. And then we have some of the sentence expansion strategies from uh, the writing revolution. So I gave the sentence stem, Spartans were tough warriors, but, and then he completed it. Um, they had harsh rules. They won most of the battles. And again, he sounded this out as he went. And then we have a page on triremes. So he drew a picture and labeled it and did some copy work. I'm not sure what book this came out of. It was not History Quest copy work. And then his last section was on the Parthenon. He did a little cutaway drawing using some of those books I showed you. He labeled it. 
and then he did a little bit more copy work down here. And so, as you notice, kind of throughout this, we're doing lots of different kinds of writing and pulling that in. And I will speak more about how I plan our writing um, another time. I do think I have a video on Instagram about that. So that is a wrap on all of these resources. If you have questions, let me know. I will try to put together a highlight over on Instagram of the things that we did. I have a Amazon list with all the books and that will be linked below.